week 24. We are here, the final week of the NBA's regular season. It's bad, but let's take a look. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and Bart, got a big ass head though, my bad Bart. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore bball, on TikTok at redrock underscore bball, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. So hit the thumbs up, hit the double bang, hit the like, all of that stuff. Uh, it's week 24. Um, I'll admit it. I'll come out and say it right now. When I first started playing fantasy basketball, our leagues went until this final week of the season because we played on ESPN and that is what it defaulted to. League defaults, you might think, well, it's easy. The commission can change it. That's true. But they cause a ton of problems in fantasy basketball and these sites because they are lazy and don't care, refuse to make any adjustments to it. Yahoo and ESPN. Their default settings are horrendous and need to change. But I know some of you are going to be playing the second week of your ESPN playoffs this week. I know some of you, for some God knows reason on Yahoo, might have even adjusted the time so that you go through to week 24. If you're in a Roto League, and every time I say this, end your season early, but what about Roto? Roto can keep going through this week. It's still going to be annoying, but you can still go through this week. That is totally reasonable. Not, not a problem whatsoever. But this week is going to be disgusting. Not only because of the uh, fake injuries and rest, shout out to the Grizzlies bringing back Desmond Bain for whatever reason, um, or even shout out to the Grizzlies for letting Jaron Jackson hit 65 games on the nose and then sitting him out two in a row back to back. Hmm, I wonder if that's coincidence or not. We'll see. Um, but I don't even know what I was going to say. Right then. Oh, it's not just that. It's the schedule itself stinks. Two zero game days, two 15 game days, a 14 game day as well. So it's not even a full week. It is just a disgusting day, week A to watch basketball because of the way the schedule's set out and to play fantasy. It's dreadful as well. But I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be doing the shows. I'm still going to be criticizing this every single turn, but we're still going to be here. We're still going to be doing it. So let's, let's talk week 24. Let's have a look. I don't remember if I hit that stinger already. That's a pretty common theme with me. So let's look at the week. No games on Monday. That's great. Uh, that's the NCAA championship game. Not sure why they didn't put the women's game on that day. More people are watching that than the men's one this, this year. But that's all right. Whatever. The, uh, yeah, the, the NCAA championship game is on Monday. Tuesday. We've got 14 games on. I don't know why they just didn't go hard and make it 15 as well. Why do only 14? Oh, well. Wednesday, we've got eight. Oh, there we go. Normalcy. Thursday, we've got five. Sick. And then the last three days of the year, absolutely disgusting nonsense. 15 games on Friday, every team. Zero games on Saturday, no teams. And then 15 games on Sunday to end the season. Now, I'm going to say my stance has softened, but that's incorrect. My stance has changed slightly. Because normally I'd look at this and go, well, you can't stream Tuesday. You can't stream Friday. You can't stream Sunday, right? You definitely can't stream Monday and Saturday because there are no games on, so we, we know that already. My stance changing on those 14, 15 game days is that because this is the final week of this, this was week seven and we had this scheduled, then yeah, you had no chance of streaming those days, none. But because of the nonsense that is this week, you might have five blokes, six blokes on your roster on Sunday or even on Friday that are sitting out the final two games. Therefore, streaming in Buddy Bayheim. Streaming in um, Trey Jemison, streaming in Justin Manea might actually make sense for those days. So you might find the 0% rostered bloke on your waiver wire who you can add for Friday and Sunday, who's going to play 39 minutes across those two games each game and be useful. So I could just easily come here and go, well, here's your week 24 preview. Can't stream it all. Good luck and see you later. I could do that. But there is going to be stuff that opens up. The problem I have is I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know who's going to... Like, is Cade done for the year? Maybe, probably. 
Is Jalen Duran's random ankle injury for Saturday meaning he's done? I'm not sure. Is Jaron hitting 65 games and then sitting mean he's done? Is Bain done? Probably, yes. I don't know. What about Kuzma? Is he out for the year? No idea. Calden Johnson? Probably. I, I don't know. And you're going to have more and more weird things happen throughout the week. What I do know is you can definitely stream on Wednesday and Thursday. Like 100% you can stream on Wednesday and Thursday. The problem is... There's no team plays both Wednesday and Thursday, so you can't even get an advantage there. So the way you use your moves this week is really, really going to be up to you. I would like to try and use them on Wednesday, Thursday, get a game played advantage. But also, I do think that holding something for the Sunday makes sense because even though you might be like, well, every team plays, so I've got 10 starters, I've got three bench, they've all got games. There is a gigantic chance that you will have four players who are currently on your roster right now that do not play on Sunday. You might have six guys on Sunday that do not play. I don't know. But that you will see, like, any, if you have, do you have any Boston starters? They're not playing. They're their top six guys and not playing on Sunday. Do you have Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley? They're not playing. Do you have um, Nikola Jokic? Not playing. Like, the, you know how many guys there are going to be that do not play on Sunday? So to think that you will be lucky enough to skate by with only three guys sitting out on Sunday, I think you're going to be kidding yourself. So while that would make sense to go, well, I'm just going to stream in two guys on Wednesday, two guys on Thursday, and I'm done because yeah, they're the only way I can get extra games. I reckon you might, I don't know this, but I reckon you might find yourself on Sunday with seven guys active. You might. You might find yourself with seven guys active on Friday. And because everyone plays Friday and everyone plays Sunday, that actually turns into a back-to-back for whatever scrap heap nonsense you can pick up and actually get two games, one on Friday, one on Sunday, and they do become unbelievably startable. That is a leap of faith for me to expect that NBA teams sit, guys. Don't know where I'll get that idea, but that is, I don't know this for sure, and I don't know who's going to be out, but I do, from years and years of experience and closing in on doing 5,000 of these podcasts, that on Friday and Sunday, you will have blokes out everywhere, like everywhere. Any team that settles that LeBron, is he playing? Are they locked into their seat? Is Steph playing the final game? Probably not. Probably not. Like, there is going to be, like, Jim, Jim Butler, he ready to go, is he? He's going to roll out there on Sunday? I don't know, but I really doubt that everyone is going to go on that day. It's going to be disaster time. This, if, if, you, if you are someone who browses, I know I'm talking a lot here, if you browses the comments section of Instagram, which is a terrible idea. Anytime you see a G League post, Ken Lofton had 42 and 10. They're doing my boy wrong. He showed he can, he showed he can ball out. Man had a 40-point game in the NBA, but still no one gives him a chance. It, they're blackballing him. Kenny Lofton had 42 points on the final day of last season because of what is going to happen. Trust me. There is going to be bullshit everywhere, all over the shop. 24 teams play four games this week. Atlanta, Boston, Charlotte, Chicago, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, the Warriors, Rockets, Clippers, Grizzlies, Heat, Bucks, Wolves, Pelicans, Knicks, Thunder, Magic, Suns, Blazers, Kings, Spurs, Raptors, Jazz. Who are the teams at a real risk of sitting guys? Boston, Charlotte, probably not Chicago. Doncic, maybe in Dallas. Denver, yes. Detroit, yes. Golden State, yes. Houston, don't think so. Clippers, yes. Memphis, of course. Miami, yes. Milwaukee, yes. Minnesota, maybe. Pelicans, not probably not. Knicks, no. Thunder, or well, they're already guys out anyway. Orlando, no. Phoenix, maybe. Portland, 100%. Sacramento, probably not. San Antonio, yes. Toronto, 100%. Utah, what are we even talking about? Darius, basically, the team in minutes. So, yeah, they are the teams that you are at real risk of them are not playing or not fulfilling their full game obligation. There are six teams to play three. Brooklyn, Cleveland, Indiana, the Lakers, the Sixers, and the Wizards. So... You might be looking at a Tristan Vukcevic, who's got three games. You might be looking at um, Noah Clowney's big performance last time out, or random Lakers or Sixers or whoever. But they do have fewer games. But remember, a lot of those four-game teams, those players will not play in four games. I feel very, very confident about saying that. Today's episode is brought to you by Fire. Not the emoji, but Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, live games, highlights, in-depth analysis, and whatever it is that this show provides. Fire TV offers amazing viewer experiences with smart TVs. Plus, you got the good old Fire TV stick. We can just plug straight into your TV to get access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free 
and live TV. So baseball, the tournament, women's final, men's final, it's all happening over there. You're going to want to have Fire TV. And Fire TV has recently created Fire TV channels. Again, not the emoji, but they're called Fire TV channels. Gives you a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free, including the Locked On Podcast Network, and most of the big leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, everything else. Great news as well. Entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking, it's all there. Fire TV channels available on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, I don't know what you're doing. Like, just get, in, get into it. Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go and uh, have a look at how we're going to play the rest of the schedule. Normally, we would head straight to the stream zone. Um, we are going to head to the stream zone, but it's empty, right? There's no like, well, you do this plan and give you this and this and this. Because technically, we have two streaming days and there's no back-to-backs and that's it. But like, like I said, I think holding something for maybe Friday, Sunday, I think something will appear. Versus like, well, I've got to get somebody in with five games on on Thursday, and then you might not have anyone that you like there. Whereas you're going to have the pick of literally everybody, Friday through and Sunday. So if we hear that somebody is out for a bruised gooch, out for those two games, you can add them in. Two game absence for a tweaked nipple, no problem. We've got the replacement to jump in there. What else is a funny name? Who's the funniest player that could be signed between now and the end of the year that then pops up for 30 minutes? There's going to be someone funny. I can't think who it is. Tony Snell getting the one game, uh, one game opportunity. He's not funny because we know the issues with his family and his health, but just the, the, uh, the Tony Snell stat line memes. Who else would be funny? Isaiah Thomas is already on a contract, so he's, he would be funny. What if they uh, dusted off Joe Johnson? That'd be pretty funny. Anyway, you got theoretically two stream days, Tuesday and Wednesday, but no back-to-backs there. But don't rule out the big game days. Don't rule them out. There are four teams that don't play on either Tuesday or Wednesday. That's bad, obviously. Indiana, the Lakers, the Sixers, and the Wizards. No games for these blokes on Tuesday or Wednesday, your traditional streaming sort of days. The teams that play on Wednesday... Atlanta, Brooklyn, Charlotte, Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, the Clippers, the Grizzlies, the Heat, the Bucks, the Wolves, the Thunder, the Magic, the Suns, the Spurs, and the Raptors. So ideally, again, you try and add someone from those teams, and there are going to be lots of options here. Grant Williams, Vasily Misic, uh, Max Struess, maybe. Dallas, eh, maybe, maybe not. The Clippers, Norm Powell, Grizzlies. Not, they're even ruling blokes out like Lamar Stevens now, so who knows? Maybe it is my man, the chairman, Malzina Pereira. Does he jump in? Um, Miami. Jovic, maybe. The Bucks. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe they need to fight for seeding. Uh, the Wolves, the Thunder. There's just a lot there, right? The thing that you probably want to more look to do is look at the teams that play Thursday, and there are 10 of them. Boston, Chicago, Detroit, the Warriors, Rockets, Pelicans, Knicks, Blazers, Kings, Jazz. Now, the Jazz are going to be foolish. The Blazers are going to be foolish. But the reason you want these is because every team that plays on Thursday also plays Friday, also plays Sunday. So the next three game days, they play. So you've got that little bit of value. And there's Boston is Boston is going to be sitting everybody. They are not playing all the way through this. No way. So you're going to have Cornette, Pritchard, Hauser, Javante Green in Chicago, maybe. Who knows? Detroit, like <sighs> Wiseman, Sasser, Flynn. I don't know. There's a lot of different guys that can jump in there. We already know that there are 14 games on Tuesday. So who are the two teams that don't play on Tuesday? Well, it's Brooklyn and Cleveland. We know they have the games on Wednesday, but you know they don't play that Tuesday. They're coming off a weekend back-to-back, though. So they play Saturday, Sunday, and then you head in with no Tuesday game, and then you get them there for Wednesday. So you know, is that important for you to note? A little bit. But again, there are 14 games on Tuesday, and while you might end up with some active slots... That's going to become more apparent on the 15 games on Friday and even more apparent on the 15 games on Sunday. There are two situations this week because of the stupidity of the schedule where we've got back-to-back-to-backs. Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday's a zero-game day. So three game days in a row, all of these teams play. 
So if you're considering an end of week stream on week 23, look at Charlotte, Dallas, the Clippers, the Heat, the Bucks, the Wolves, the Thunder, the Magic, the Suns, the Spurs, and the Raptors. And it's very easy to say again that you wouldn't even start them Tuesday. But who knows? Because on some of these teams, Grant Williams, some of these teams, maybe it is Jovic. Maybe it is, um, who can I think of here? Uh, Julian Champagne. Maybe it is Toronto Jalen McDaniels in a deep league. And with random blokes sitting, maybe you would start them Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You can answer that, but you can't just dismiss it offhand. Thursday, Friday, Sunday is another instance of a three-way back-to-back. Yes, there's a Saturday in the middle there. This theoretically would be a three-game-in-four-night scenario, and it is three games in four nights, really. But it's a back-to-back-to-back because there are no games. So you have three game days in a row. And it's all of those teams have played Thursday, like I just mentioned. Boston, Chicago, Detroit, Warriors, Rockets, Pelicans, Knicks, Blazers, Kings, Jazz. You get the back-to-back-to-back at the end of uh, the week and rounding out all of the NBA's regular season. Today's episode is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, that you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar that you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar that you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That is right. There is no cap on that 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk and including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. A 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. All right, so let's round this stuff out. I said three game in four nights. I'll talk about this because everybody, apart from the following six teams, has a three games in four nights stretch starting on, on Tuesday. That is Brooklyn, Cleveland, Indiana, the Lakers, Philadelphia, and Washington. So we've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Every team, all 24 teams, have three games in four nights in that time frame apart from those six. So it's not about finding the the bulk ad team. It's about avoiding the lower volume teams, which are those six there that we've got if you're trying to limit moves or hold stuff for the final Sunday. If we look at just the actual back-to-backs, again, there are so many weird scenarios going on here. If we look Sunday through Tuesday, every team except for Atlanta, Brooklyn, Cleveland, Denver, Detroit, and Memphis have a Sunday, Tuesday back-to-back. Every team. The Tuesday, Wednesday, we have got a lot of teams there as well. Atlanta, Charlotte, Dallas, Denver, Clippers, Grizzlies, Heat, Bucks, Wolves, Thunder, Magic, Suns, Spurs, and Raptors play the Tuesday, Wednesday back-to-back. Nobody has a Wednesday, Thursday, which is a shame for us from a fantasy point of view. Thursday, Friday back-to-back, you've got Boston, Chicago, Detroit, the Warriors, the Rockets, Pelicans, and Knicks. Blazers, Kings, Jazz, like I said, this Thursday, Friday, back-to-back is also the Thursday, Friday, Sunday, back-to-back-to-back to to end the week because every team that plays Thursday also plays Friday and also plays on Sunday. If you are in a weekly league, um, again, just prioritize four games over three games as a general rule, but there are six names that I've got here that are actually a few more who I do think will have pretty solid roles all week and are just widely available, mainly through to tanking and stuff, but There are guys here. Number one is Jabari Walker. The man's playing 40 minutes a night. Now, odds of March legend Jeremy Grant can be resurrected at any point to play his first April game in four years. That is possible. (laughs) This is absolutely not possible. There's no way that Jeremy Grant's playing. Who am I kidding? Hamstring strain, doubtful. He's going for 20 tags in a row. Can he do it? He's not. He's going for 17 in a row, I think. 17 doubtful tags in a row. Can he do it? Yeah, of course he can. But Jabari Walker's going to play 40 minutes. Vasimisic is um, playing pretty well. And he just should be rostered. We know there's no Vassal. We know there's no Sohan in San Antonio. I don't think there's going to be a Keldon Johnson. Like, he had a foot issue. Then Pop said the next game he misses because he was doing poos. Um, and then he missed the next game anyway. So 
was he actually doing poos or was it his foot that's a real problem or they're keeping me because it's fake? I don't know. I'm not sure that uh, pooing problems lead that to that long of an absence. Has he got cholera? I think it's a foot or more likely it's fake. So Julian Champagne is playing 37 minutes in each of the last two games. So we're in. I put Zach Collins' name here. I could have put Sandro Mamakelishvili's name here and I probably should have as well. But Collins played 27 minutes last game, crossing over with Wembenyama. Now, I don't know whether Wembenyama plays all four games this week. I've got no idea. But the fact that last game, that they crossed over and he played 27 minutes, that's enough. I'm in. It might not happen every game. He might sit and then the Trojan Dobby Barlow comes in. Possible also. But it was interesting. Trey man, available. Minutes, cool. We're good. And lastly, this Chemezi Metsu. Now, last game... He barely played like in the first half, first three quarters. Then he got a lot of run towards the end and ended up with four steals. He can get pistoned at any point. Money Williams can get him um, and just screw with anything that we consider maybe is going to happen on this team because A is a horrible... Co- but that franchise, what are they doing? How, if There are things that are going to happen this offseason. Monty Williams is going to keep his job. Troy Weaver is going to keep his job. Chauncey Billups is going to keep, keep his job, which are literally insane by any metric whatsoever you look at. Like, insane. That's not true. Monty keeping his job by the metric of, I don't want to have to pay out $70 million, makes sense. The others, no rationale. Anyway, Chimizu Metsu could be a guy that you could consider a weekly ad. But man, it is going to be a minefield. You've got to pay super attention to everything that's happened. You have to even make backup moves. If you've got Fab, you go, well, maybe I don't need this guy, but what if I just add him in case one of my other starters gets hurt and I've got someone to plug in? That's what I'm going to be doing in my road league, like making moves to make sure I've got somebody to replace somebody in case they sit out. Because I want to make sure I hit my maxes. <sighs> what a week. Guys, we're done. That is the end of the show. And I want that you blokes that are here and girls that are here to go and hit the thumb up, to go and subscribe, ring the bell, and leave your comments down below because you are the true double-banging legends, the ones that are still here with us towards the end of the season. If you're playing fantasy, that's not legendary, but if you're here just watching, that's even better. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.